to my value from programtom.com here and in this episode I'm gonna talk about how far a service is from decentralization. I've driven into Ethereum and I thought to ask myself how much decentralization a service could achieve with all the new Web3 APIs and services. I've written m m more about uh, this topic in the current status of the internet in several previous articles like uh, level of independence of a service that uh, uh, how, f uh, how much a service is independent from uh, uh, different uh, niches like uh, currency, like um, financial point of view, like legal point of view, like uh, the independency from the hardware below. And also I've written, uh, are you in control of the technology? Do you self-host your stuff? Uh, do uh, does your content uh, is uh, hosted on your platform or it is on social media e-commerce marketplaces and platforms and uh, stuff like that and al also I've written uh, an article internet security illusions how much uh, the security of the internet is illusionary even though um, the internet is already HTTPS SSL because of uh, uh, Snowden's uh, revelations that the uh, secret services are listening all the traffic around the internet even with that in place with the HTTPS there are many layers around the internet that uh, could uh, still sniff the content like uh, you, um, most basically the encryptions could be actually with uh, some loopholes the browser that does the encrypt en encrypting and decrypting is uh, open to question with uh, uh, all the big uh, browsers provided by big corporations like Google and Apple all the applications uh, you know you don't know how much they uh, they encrypt stuff even that uh, they say that the messages are encrypted for, for example the messaging services you may know uh, you may be shown a display that something is encrypted but you don't know the underlying truth <coughs> so uh, many times the operating there are operating system uh, listeners that uh, could probably uh, control the keys that do the encryption and decryption and yeah <coughs> another external services are the DNS services, the SSL service providers, and the internet uh, providers, and so on. Oh, there are countless number of third-party individuals and men in the middle that could potentially harm and decrypt and sniff all the content around the internet. So <coughs> many of these. Uh, are in the application layer but uh, there are some decentralized counterparts of these services today there is already present some initial development uh, some have battle tested usage and other, others are just ma marketing themselves with it and are not actually Uh, successful and uh, yeah all <clears throat> all these um, decentralized uh, services and platforms need adoption this is the key point of all the blockchains they all need adoption to actually uh, create some impact otherwise there are just uh, 
small players below 1% around the internet. So the DNS and SL providers, you could use uh, old school centralized domain name services like GoDaddy, VeriSign, European Registry, Namecheap, and Let's Encrypt, that is free. The last one is free. And uh, you could also use decentralized options like Namecoin, Handshake, and ENS, and Unstoppable Domains that are uh, blockchain, uh, Ethereum based stuff. But uh, how you accept, how, uh, and even you could actually make the tools work for yourself, but how you make the everyday user uh, using uh, iOS and or Android with uh, Google or not, how you will make all these users install the necessary tooling to actually read these decentralized, decentralized options. Besides these uh, things like SL and uh, domain naming, there is also a storage problem. The storage options are tricky for several reasons. The recording technology improved a lot the last 20 years. We get accustomed to create content and if we do not delegate the content to the big uh, social media platforms, that uh, use our content for user profiling and uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. We must keep buying our own hard disks that will keep growing in space with time. Having them decentralized will be even harder. Here are in general the services that I've not noticed. The centralized options are Amazon S3, Firebase Firestore, Cloud Storage, that are actually developer APIs that uh, developers could uh, create services on them. And there are <coughs> user applications like Dropbox, Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, and uh, Apple Cloud, iCloud. So these are user applications with limitation to some amount for free, or they could offer some paid uh, bigger amount of storage. They synchronize the files in, in a folder between all your user profile installations. There are also a mega and tweet transfer or some similar services for one-time pick transfers. You could also use decentralized storage options like SIA, uh, Filecoin, Rweave and IPFS. I've noticed, for example, that uh, uh, many of the NFTs use a uh, IPFS, and they actually are. Uh, there is actually required and must use IPFS. Otherwise, the metadata of the NFTs will will be vulnerable to change. So, in, with these services, you give some space from your computer to these torrent-like services and in exchange the platform gives you some uh, some storage amount that will be uh, hash based that is decentralized and you know a file saved on some decentralized storage uh, will be the same because of the hash of the file so for fixed files, the good old internet technology could do the trick. Some of the Linux distributions are offered as torrents. There are piracy-based uh, torrents that share uh, movies and stuff. But uh, yeah, they are <coughs> illegal. I've heard that some games with big files use torrent underneath uh, with, without the user ever, ever knowing this. There are some disadvantages to this approach. 
you fix the files that you share in a specific list that you enumerate in the torrent and if you change these files you need to create a new torrent and share the new torrent to the world yeah this is the disadvantage and there are APIs to share that data between devices that are connected through some socket or some server without the servers storing the files so the servers are used only for transmitting the files between your devices and actually <coughs> uh, potentially hopefully not storing them and there are also some products that allow you to share your files locally the, uh, they accomplish this without any byte ever leaving your local area network i've tried to develop similar applications uh, in the past and stop their development they failed because the world went into the clouds like uh, one of the applications is pc uh, synchronize bytes over the local network and it was using uh, old android APIs and yeah google changed android too fast too often and i could not keep up with the development of this so i i had a desktop versions of the the software and on android but uh yeah uh, i con didn't i failed to accomplish creating uh, windows and ios uh, version of this application more simply i've also created um, notes application that was doing this synchronization and on a personal project application but this uh, local synchronization is uh, doom was doomed to fail because uh, you, even for the smallest computing nowadays with the microservices the world is going to the clouds if you are plan planning to give some uh, something to the broader public it must have scalability availability and must be easy to access for the mere mortal for non-technical individuals not all crypto services are easy to adapt to the unspoken requirements of the non-tech users so this is uh, one of the reasons uh, why the blockchain technologies are not adopted massively because they they are technical and they have complexities that uh, scammers use to uh, use the marketing terms of the blockchain the marketing features of the blockchain use only as uh, baits for scamming people so for data processing logic the the centralized options are amazon web services google cloud azure snowflake and the decentralized options are the general purpose programmable blockchains ethereum tron and cardano uh, i'm i'm i need to check out how is the development going here on cardano and what are the features for developers as i haven't uh, checked them out recently I identical to, to tron yeah i need to check uh, what features they've actually uh, given to the users if it will be easy to implement some something decentralized and there are also ocean protocol there is also ocean protocol uh, and streamer for streams and there is actually a no noster it was called this way n o s t r uh, so this is a protocol for uh, decentralized social media 
that uh, was uh, that was adopted by uh, Jack, the ex uh, owner of uh, of Twitter. So yeah, and other applications that uh, are actually for music, Spotify, Medium for uh, Box and Upwork for work. And there are decentralized options for for the same. Audios for music, Mirror for decentralized blogging. And Brain Trust for Upwork jobs. I'm not sure how how decentralized are they uh, and Uniswap is for decentralized finance and OpenSea is for marketplace for NFTs <coughs> so warning not all of these variations especially the decentralized are actually ready for production and Oh, at least I've not investigated them enough. Most of them should have released source code and binaries, or something, something else in the development from the development phase. And if it is not present on GitHub or on other uh, uh, the programmer platform, uh, check out and be aware that it may be some closed source stuff. It is one thing that you're gonna say you're gonna do something and it is different if you actually do it. The more important aspect is to have released some, something to the public internet in terms of source code. And it is a never next level universe the thing to actually work and to attract millions of users and to slide without bugs and problems. The last thing is uh, one of the most tricky because uh, of marketing, branding and to what problems they solve besides decentralization. So yeah, people use stuff emotionally and because of uh, the user base of the platforms. So yeah, if I, you, you're going to publish something to the decentralized uh, platforms who actually who, uh, what number of individuals actually will use and see the thing that you publish probably less than on the centralized platforms so the whole idea here is to figure out the software layers need to be independent if you want so who wants to be independent probably one that speak against the centralized authorities and they could uh, find services that do the work but they must do it so uh, without uh, sacrificing the number of users they could reach there are decentral decentralized domain name services there is decentralized SEO for the browsers and there are some coin platforms that offer independent storage. At the top, there is a blockchain based unstoppable programmability. The last options are high level platforms that specialize services with less low level hand handling. The whole, you know, the whole idea of programming at the end is to rise as much as we could from the mere bytes and their handling and program actual logic that is close and uh, easy to describe with, without uh, managing uh, how the bytes is stored and where and yeah this is the ultimate goal of programming to rise uh, on the level of things that you describe and the, if uh, some technology is powerful, uh, it will 
to be handled with a decentralized uh, stack beneath and yeah this is for this episode